dating and makeover expert where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Today I am doing something a little different, which I cannot wait to share. I was super excited to hop on today. As you know, I coach a lot of people. And of course, you've heard me coaching people live on this podcast with my Coaching with Kim episodes. And, you know, to me, it's always bittersweet when my clients graduate, to be honest, into this thing called life, right? Like it feels sometimes when people graduate. And in fact, it's, you know, it's kind of fresh in my mind because I've, I've had about three, four clients, quote unquote, graduate because they're, they're in such a good place. It almost feels like I'm a proud mom sending my students off to college to experience life after coaching. And by the way, that is always my goal. I mean, my goal isn't to have people be, you know, my clients forever and ever. So nothing makes me happier. But I but I do wonder sometimes what happens to them afterwards. And it's so amazing and rewarding when I hear from my clients, you know, these countless stories and success stories. And I read thousands of emails that come in of previous clients updating me on how their life has improved and pictures that people send me of their new loved ones. And so if you ever wonder what happens to the people after I work with, you are in luck. You know, it's to me, this is like watching a reality show and wondering, okay, well, that was really great. And it looks like people are happy, you know, like the bachelor or the bachelorette, but then don't you wonder like, where are they now? So I'm going to be doing some special segments called where are they now? So that you too can be inspired by people's successes. And today I am bringing on someone who I coached. It's weird. I look back when we had done this Coaching with Kim segment. It was one year ago today on this podcast, and she was one of my first segments, in fact, and it was an emotional one. So just to refresh your memory, and if you hadn't heard it, I'll recap. So her name is Anne. and the episode was called How to Get Beyond the First Date. And I had worked with Anne a little bit prior to that episode, and so she had mastered at that point the art of getting guys to the first date, right? But by the time we had that call, she had a difficult time securing the second one, and she was stumped. And I uncovered on that episode the real reasons why she couldn't get past the first encounter and why it was difficult for her to find chemistry with men. Now, on that live episode, Anne actually broke down and cried after facing some surprising and revealing hard truths about how her lack of emotional expression, which actually was caused by a lot of fears of getting hurt, were causing a lack of connection on dates. And she learned that when you gain clarity about what you want and you express that intention directly you will begin to attract the kind of partners that match that intention and match where you are. And then I sent her off with some tips on how to get past those fears and create connections upon that first impression. Now, what you don't know is that Anne actually ended up working with me pretty intensely. She did my Love Makeover online boot camp, which, by the way, is coming up soon again, which I will announce at the end. Um, she did a retreat of mine, and then we did some individual coaching. So I want to say she did the work. You know, nothing in life comes easy without work. And because of that, she got the results that she wanted. And I am so happy to say she is one of those people who sent me this adorable picture of her and her new boyfriend because she is now in a beautiful, healthy relationship. In fact, she said to me, she's in love. Yay. Welcome back, Anne. Hi, Kim. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. This is just amazing and special. And I, uh, I'm just, I'm so happy for you. (laughs) Okay, I know like everyone wants to know. Like just tell us about your new man. Like what's he like? <laughs> well, 
Well, it's, it's, um, it's such a different relationship for me than I've had before and experienced before. It's, um, like I feel loved and I feel cherished and he tells me that and makes me feel that way every day. Um, it's, it's an easy relationship. We don't, it's not something that's hard. It's not hard to get along. It's not hard to be in a relationship. It's really easy. We just get along. We really enjoy each other's company. We love being around each other. We get each other. Um, and the other thing that I think that was a big deal for me is he makes me a priority and our relationship a priority. And that's something that I was looking for and struggled with so much in some prior relationships. Um, and, and this one, it's just, it was there from the beginning. This, it's not, it's not like I'm pulling anything from him. He is giving and I'm giving and it's, we're both in it together. So it's been amazing. Oh my gosh. Isn't it, isn't it amazing when it is that easy? You almost don't trust it. Right. And you're like, waiting. <laughs> yes. you're like waiting for the ball to drop. It's like, wait a second. You know, you keep shaking yourself, but, but that's how, I mean, you know, it's right when it is that easy and it's, you know, and of course you did a lot of work to get there, but yes. amazing. Okay. But what you didn't say is, so is he cute? Is there physical chemistry? Oh, Come on. Yes. He's <laughs> <Real big>. detail. <laughs> He is very cute, and yes, they have uh-huh. lots of good chemistry, uh-huh. and um, he's very smart and funny and hmm. just um, just a, a good person that I really respect and that I want to want to be around. And and also this thing that I found that was interesting with this one is I want him to know everybody in my life. Like I want everyone to know him uh-huh. because I just want him to be part of my life. Um, so yeah, that's been that's also been another big different kind of feeling for me of like, yes, I want him to just be a part of my life every day. And and he feels the same way. It's really awesome. You know, all the things that you just listed out, I think, you know, we all have these kind of lists and in, in, in our mind, or, and some of us actually write it down. And I always encourage that, you know, but sometimes the things on our list that we want board, you know, like in, in, usually the things that we want are things that we lacked you know, in our previous yes. relationships or, or things that we crave. And so that can also, I mean, I, I feel at times stop us because we're looking for like that perfection type of thing. But because I think you went through your journey and you did the work, you mm-hmm. created a space actually where you were more open. I, I mean, I think that is what impressed me about you is that you, you did kind of open yourself up to many, many possibilities and mm-hmm you collected data along the way and, and this is where you ended up. And, and so, oh my God, that's beautiful. Well, I thought, and I think it'd be so helpful for people listening just, you know, to maybe walk through, cause people, I don't think knew what your life was before, like before mm-hmm. you and I had that first phone call way back when <laughs> you remember that call. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, to- I totally remember that. Um, what were like, what was your life like? What did you think? What did you feel? What'd you do? What, what was dating life like? Sure. So before, yeah. So before you and I first started talking, gosh, a year and a half to two years ago, I I had already started, started dating again after divorce. So I'd been dating. I had a lot, as we talked about in the last podcast a year ago, I had a lot of first dates. Yeah. Um, And I'd only had a couple at that point, only two different men that I'd gone out with more than, more than a couple times. So, um, it was a lot, a lot, a lot of first dates. So I was really good at getting a first date, but I was not very good at getting to a second, third, et cetera, um, date. So it was, yeah, I think one of the things that, that I was doing a lot then that I've learned, learned to do better now is before I was, I'm a great listener. I'd ask great questions. I'd make them feel so heard and then they would leave the dates and not know anything about me. And I think that was one of the big things that I was doing. And we've talked about that and talked about that a lot in the last podcast. And one of the things that we've worked on a ton and it's just that I needed to open up and share more of who I was and what I was feeling and share experiences to create that connection. And I was not creating a connection. I was just being a really good listener. Yeah. Um, I think that was a big downfall. I totally remember that. And I'd also remember, like, describe the type of guys you were attracting to. Because I know when you and I called, there was that guy in your life, right? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, yep. So I have, yes, I had a guy in my life off and on, off and on, off and on the, mm-hmm. um, as Kim calls him, the intermittent reinforcer, yep. so I would get the crumbs <laughs> and just enough. And then he'd come back around just when I was off dating other people and trying to get, get beyond it. Then he'd come back around and, um, come back in. And I think with that situation, you know, a lot of it was it, he was the first person I really had multiple dates with and had a real connection with after my divorce. So it was that, first person post-divorce of really having chemistry with and fun and seeing that I could be attractive again after going through that horrible divorce experience. And so I kept kind of going back to it, even though he was not making me a priority. He was not making our relationship a priority. He was not um, giving me the cake. He was just giving me the crumbs. Um, But I wasn't finding anyone else better. So I kept going back because I kept, it felt good. So I'm like, oh, well, let's just go back to that. So I, you know, that was also a problem. And that also kept me from moving on to multiple dates with other people because I had this kind of other situation that was always in the back of my mind that I was comparing to and unfairly comparing and, you know, comparing something that wasn't really that great. (laughs) But I, at the time I didn't really, I didn't know better. Well, and, and, you know, I call that the rites of passage, almost post-divorce, like everyone needs Mm -hmm. that transitional romance, I feel to, you know, like you said, get your mojo back to, to gain your confidence again, to feel like a woman, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and actually that validation that you probably felt, albeit it was crumbs, but for you, you didn't know it was crumbs at the time for you. It felt like a cake. I mean, that was the thing because when you, you were deprived, like you came from having no food at all to then having the crumbs. So for you, that was a meal. Right. So you're like, oh my God, this tastes so good. You know, I'm getting filled up. But then, and in, in, yeah, as time went by, you realized that that wasn't nutrition at all. <laughs> you know, that wasn't enough. Right. That wasn't the full, you know, thing. And, but do you remember, because I think this is another thing that people go through. Do you remember the feelings that you were having during that period? Like what was going through your mind? What, what was, those, you know, I mean, that rub and that tug of war that you were feeling. Yeah, I think, um, gosh, I would say I was, it would, it would vary by the week, right? As you go through dating, it always varies. Um, but I would, I would sometimes feel hopeful because I'd have dates lined up and I, I would have a positive outlook, like, great, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm out there. I am doing, you know, doing some work. I'm not just sitting at home, but then other times it gets discouraging and frustrating because you keep meeting people that are nice, but you're not really connecting to, and it's just discouraging. And, um, Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I, and I did start to feel a little bit of like, is, is there something, something wrong with me? What am I not doing right? You know, what's, what's, what's the problem that I can't get past this? Um, and I was very open to trying to find, you know, to do research and listen to podcasts. That's how I found you, Kim, and, and finding, um, you know, reading books and trying to figure it out. Like, I'm, I'm not sitting thinking, you know, it's the man's fault. I know that I have to do the work on myself, but, you know, it gets, it gets discouraging. It gets, it, yeah, it was getting All discouraging. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think, and if I remember right, I think we had an initial call where you still weren't ready you, right. Mm-hmm. You had that call. And then you, I think there was some time that went by. And then I think you got yes. to the point that you called me up and I was just wondering like what changed, you know, in that period when you yeah. stepped up and invested in yourself where you're like, I'm fed up, like what happened? I'm trying to think what exactly was happening. I'm sure it was mm-hmm. another round of the intermittent reinforcer yeah. And, yeah. and being done with that again and just realizing that is that needs to be over. Um, and I need, to, I just need to do something different. And I, I'm not sure exactly what, I can't say what, mm-hmm. clicked, but I, but something did click for me saying, okay, it's worth me spending a little bit of money, spending a little bit of time and making this a priority. Cause I had done some of it. Like I said, you know, I, I was reading some books and listening to podcasts and trying to figure out what other ways to go about this whole dating situation, which is so different post-divorce and post-kids than it was when we, were, when we were young and in college and in our 20s. Yeah. Um, but but I did get to that point where I'm like, I need to do more than just that. I need to do something that's more intensive so that I can really figure it out because it's, it's not just figuring it out just to date um, and just to try to get a man. It, it becomes figuring yourself out and mm. figuring out what, what's going on. Because I, I, the other thing I would say that came out of all this beyond just the romantic side of things is 
I have better relationships with my friends and family too, Mm. because it's helped me open up and be sharing. How do I feel about something? What do I think about something? What's going on with me and being more open? Cause I was doing that in my life outside of dating as well. I, you know, I'm always the one that everything's good. I'm going to take care of it and everything's fine. So it just helps my, my relationships in general, not just romantically. Oh my God. I love that you said that. Cause I always say like what shows up in one area of your life always leaks into others. It's, it's everywhere. You can't hide, (laughs) you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, maybe you're putting your finger on the hole of a bucket that's leaking, but you know, then the other hole pops up on the other side, you know, it just, you're just (laughs) putting, you know, fingers and instead of really just, you know, dumping the water in something that is more secure and solid. And, and that is a really good realization. And I think that, um, I love also what you said about, I think many of us start out where we have an awareness, like we know that we need help. And, and, and so the passive approach and a beginning approach is to listen to podcasts like this or, you know, read books mm-hmm. and get education, but gosh, darn it, it is hard to do this stuff on your own. I mean, nobody, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like we all need coaches. I have a coach, you know, we, it, we all can't really see ourselves, you know, and we need that accountability, I think, too, and a plan. And I think with you, and if you don't mind me saying, because I, you're so successful and you're so beautiful and you have like a lot of things together in your life. And I think maybe that was another frustration I remember us talking about. It's like, well, why can't I figure this out? Like I, I have everything else figured <laughs> out in my life. Like why, why can't I do this? to perfection, yes. you know, like that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. That's very true. Yes. And I am a bit of a perfectionist. I'm a bit mm-hmm. of a, you know, I do things well. So this, this was, yeah, this was a challenge of not doing things well. And I think too, a lot of, I, I know I'm not the only one um, coming out of divorce that, that feels this way. It's that frustration yeah. post-divorce of you just, you, for some reason we have it in our minds that, oh, after divorce, you know, within a year or two, we're going to be in this beautiful relationship and then get remarried. Right. Oh and that's just God, not the way right? it works. Oh, yeah. Yes. And once you start dating again, and once you start mm-hmm. figuring yourself out and figuring out what this looks like, you realize that's just not, that's not reality. But yep. I think so many of us go through that. Of, well, why isn't this working already? Like it didn't, it didn't seem this hard when I was in my twenties. <laughs> why is this so hard now? Exactly. Exactly. Well, and and it's also a way of numbing out if you think about it. And I remember going through this too. It's like, well, if you know, okay, woo, I'm out of the divorce. So, okay, where's my Prince Charming? I'm just going to move on. Like, you're not really doing the work. You're not saying, Hey, something like didn't work here. (laughs) And I have to figure out like a new way of being so I can attract something different, but you're right. Like, I think it's just, again, another natural thing that happens to all of us. Um, and not even just divorce. I mean, even if you've just been in a relationship for a long time, you know, and getting Mm -hmm. out back out there again. So yeah, no. Um, so like, okay. So then once we -hmm. were going through the process, had like, what were the top, I'd say, you know, three skills you gained, you know, that as you were kind of collecting your, your tools along the yellow brick road. My tools. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a couple of, a couple of the big things were uh, let's see if I if kind of look at it in a few different ways. One, kind of from the quote unquote outside piece. I mean, yeah, you are a great proponent of this and it makes a difference. It's, you know, figuring out to have your wardrobe be more feminine and just putting that perception out there for people to see you as a woman, not a business partner, not a buddy, not a friend, but to actually dress in a way that especially when you're going on dates or going in places where you would want to meet people dressing in a way that shows that you're there as a woman, not just as um, a buddy. Yeah. I think that piece. And then along with that, especially with the online stuff is um, the pictures that you're using because men are visual creatures, right? So um, they are good pictures. (laughs) (laughs) What? No. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So making sure you have good, you know, really good pictures and it makes a difference. I mean, I always had, good pictures but then after you and I worked together and we did a photo shoot I had excellent pictures and it really did make a difference in the types of pictures I had up there um as well as what I would say but I think a lot of it's the pictures but it attracted the kind of man that I was looking for um, right I mean that was difference. like I mean you know in a way it was it was your advertisement 
you know, that's why I always say yeah. it's kind of like, you know, you put your best self out there, you're marketing yourself. So I know was, I remember that when you changed the pictures, you're like, oh my God, Kim, I can't believe the difference. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Like, the guys that are chiming in. And, and so, yeah. And I think if I remember right, didn't you have a red top or a red dress? Yes. Yes. A red top. Yes. It, it was might, a red top. Yeah. Main one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Everybody yes. who's I had a red, red top in one. And yeah. Totally. Red top in one and then wearing a dress in, in the full length one. So mm-hmm. a dress and a red and something red. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And you looked phenomenal in those pictures, by the way, you were, well, and oh, you know, just, you. Well, I want to pause on that outside thing because I remember too, just to jar your memory. Like I just remember thinking that you didn't think you were as beautiful as I did <laughs> think of you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I saw, I'll never forget when you sent me your pictures. I'm like, Oh my God, she's gorgeous. And but I just remember you not seeing that quite yet, you know, like I, I that your mm-hmm. confidence level and just the way you saw yourself. And for me, just from an outside perspective, I saw you grow into that. Like I saw you really start mm-hmm. owning your beauty more and, and enjoying that part. Mm-hmm. I would, yeah, I would agree with that. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I would, yeah. I would agree with that. I think that just even in the last yeah year, year to two, to two years of just expanding how I was dating and the experiences I had, it did really boost my confidence. And I really did, yeah, own it a little bit better because it, I don't know, it's just, it just the whole experience of understanding myself better, figuring out what I wanted, how to work that. I don't know. It just, it was, it was an overall process that improved my confidence in myself. And I think then that translates to having better connections with other people um, being open to a better relationship, accepting what I really wanted versus just accepting the crumbs. Um, mm-hmm. so it's all a big cycle that goes together and helps, it, it you know, really one does. Helps the next. It totally does. It, yeah. One feeds the next. It's a good way of putting mm-hmm. it. So then after working on the yes. outside, you said the yes. second thing was like making a better connection with people. Yes. So a couple of things with the, the connecting piece. One is I definitely upped my ability to flirt and have fun in conversation. Yes. So that was a big thing that I worked on with you as well is um, both online. So doing more of the banter back and forth when you're online and then in person and on phone calls and just having more fun with it and flirting um, in a way that, that, again, you're showing the person that you are interested in a romantic situation. You're not trying to just be a buddy. So you're being more flirtatious and more fun and um, it, it's fun for you too. You're not doing this just for the other person. It, it was more fun for me. And I felt like I made better connections that way because you start to share, share more and tease mm-hmm. each other or just be fun, just be having more fun with it and yeah. not being so serious. Yeah. And that I think too, helped you be in the moment more too, rather mm-hmm. than in your head. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yes. I yeah. had to get out of my head. Uh huh. Big time. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. That's okay. Okay. So that was like kind of your second tools that you use. Yeah. What else? I would also say the, um, when you're on a date with somebody, if it's somebody that you're having a connection with and you did enjoy as the woman verbally saying out loud, I had fun. I would love to see you again. Yeah. Not planning the date. But actually, and in some way, there's different ways to say that, but you have to verbally say that out loud because men can't read our minds. They have no idea if we think that was a great date or not. We might just be being nice to them. And so it's, it's, it's hard at first if you're not used to doing that, but you have to say it out loud. Like, oh, I would love to go, whatever, if if there's something that you can connect to that you talked about, or literally just saying at the end, thank you so much. I had so much fun. I would love to see you again, or I'd love to go out again, or, you know, let's do this again something, um, so that they know that you're open to them asking you out. That's a really good specific example too, of what we were talking about before, like how you were learning how to express your feelings, like something Mm -hmm. that like that, what you just said is expressing your feelings. Like I had fun. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling good. I like you kind of thing, you know? And because sometimes people think that expressing your feelings on a first date is like TMI, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. talking about like the woes and, you know, issues in your childhood. That's not what it means. It means actually expressing yourself so that a guy feels you more. And that that's a great thing. And along those lines, would you say, that skill that you learn to, you know, say out loud, you're just where you're at, but also like setting boundaries for yourself too, like what you're wanting. 
I did. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Not, not necessarily on like a first date. I wouldn't go into, you know, what I wanted, but yeah. with, um, but I did, I did do this better with the last couple of uh, folks that I dated more than just a few times of when it would get to the point of, you know, deciding to be together in, in an exclusive relationship, actually putting out there what that meant to me and yeah. saying that out loud and making sure it's very clear um, before we'd move to that next phase of being exclusive. And I yes. think that made a big difference as well, because I started the relationship um, being very clear with what my boundaries were, what my priorities were, what I wanted versus the um, the off and on, off and on intermittent reinforcer relationship. I had learned none of that when I started that because that was the first one out of divorce that I dated. Mm-hmm. And so it started off without any of that. And so it was hard. I tried adding that in later and it would get better, but it still was never the same as, you know, now that I've been able to be clear about those things early on, it makes a huge yeah. difference. Oh my God. That is so good. And I swear we didn't talk before this. Remember, you know, I just want to say you just outlined like the three tools that you learned. You just outlined the charisma quotient formula. It's so funny. So <laughs> it, no, you did. And cause just as a reminder, I don't think I've highlighted this on the podcast before, but it, it really is increasing your style and intelligence with all the outside stuff that you described, you know, working on your clothes and your pictures and your body language, all of that. And then you, we worked on your social intelligence, flirting better, giving signals, having fun, you know, it, that interpersonal kind of relationship and, and fun that you instilled. And then, you know, ending with your emotional intelligence, how you express and manage your feelings. So I love that you just said that was like, bam, you're such a good student. Oh my God. That's no. right. Oh, thanks, Kim. Do I get yeah. an A? <laughs> That's so awesome. Um, so. Is there anything, you know, if, if you reflect back, like if you knew mm-hmm. then what you know now, you know, if you were to kind of almost give yourself adv- the, your self advice, like the, your old self, like uh-huh. what would you give? What, what advice would you give? Yeah, um, I would. The advice I'd give myself is to not not accept the crumbs and yeah. that I'm worth it. And that I, I don't have, that there are men out there who will want to make me a priority and the relationship a priority and want to be there for me and be there for me in a positive way, which I just didn't, I just hadn't experienced that before. Mm. And so it was, it just wasn't something I'd seen. Um, and now that I've experienced it um, with the relationship I'm in now, you know, tenfold, and I did have another short short exclusive relationship right after the podcast we did a year ago. Yeah, and he also yeah. was good about I was a priority and and the relationship was a priority. It was it was it was it was not only the person for me, but it was such a huge step in the right direction that prepared me now for where I am today. That it was it was a big shift in what I was accepting, what I what I wanted and what I was um then receiving because mm-hmm. I had done so much work um to make that clear as to what I wanted. So I would just tell myself don't just accept the crumbs because you don't think there's anything better out there. Cause there is, oh, there's a lot better out there. Oh, so great. And this is, I mean, really, I, it's, it's really special to me. And I so thank you for coming on and, and sharing that with the world, because I, I think there's a lot of you out there who, um, are in that first stage, you know, way back when, when you're just thinking and wondering, can it be different for me? And you're a true a testament that it can, and that you should always think that you're a priority. Always, always. I, I love, love, love that. Uh, well, maybe we'll have you on in another year and we'll just kind of track your, your, your progress. I love it. <laughs> so, That's right. Well, I just really appreciate all the help that you've given me, Kim. And this is just, it's just a great experience and it's made such a big difference. So I just, mm. thank you so much. You are so, so welcome. And again, as I always say to everybody, like it's never goodbye. It's always keep in touch and you definitely kept in touch by coming back on the podcast in front of all these people. It's just great. It's just great. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. And this has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in, as you heard Anne say. And if you are looking to find new love like Anne did, then start with a call. 
it just takes a call. Schedule one and we'll have a free coaching session. And you can do that by clicking on the link provided in the show description. And we can uncover ways you can either be on the show one day telling your success love story. And I hope you take me up on that. So stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day.